street names you pass signs every day. They tell you where you are or where you need to go, but they also tell a story. In 1819, Arkansas was the new frontier, attracting settlers to move to a new town called Little Rock. Stone monuments in Riverfront Park marked the first boundary of the city after the treaty with the Quapaw Indians in 1818. By 1820, Little Rock was declared the capital, and Mayor Dr. Matthew Cunningham paved the way for development. Well, it's a little uncertain who planted the first town of Little Rock in 1822. Uh, William Russell, the investor, was credited with uh, laying out that first town, but uh, he undoubtedly got input from Matthew Cunningham. Uh, the first mayor was from Philadelphia. He loved the place, he loved the streets there, and uh, several of the early street names of the old town of Little Rock bore names of streets from Philadelphia. On the map is Markham, along with several other street names that had been replaced. So where did Markham come from? I can't find any information either. The best story I can tell you is there was two or three brothers that arrived from somewhere. We don't know what their names were and where exactly they came from or where they went when they left, but they stayed here for a time and laid out a street and moved on. But this street is the foundation of the city. Every map of the town and city of Little Rock evermore is bore the name of a Markham Street and it's the baseline for laying out all the streets. Maybe we took a wrong turn. Let's take a detour and talk to an historian. Markham's kind of strange, really, when you look at it, that, you know, as far as the concrete proof as to where the name of Markham Street came from, there, there's not any been discovered as of yet. You've got to keep in mind when this went down, it, it was not the state of Arkansas, it was Arkansas territory. It was a wild, rough place out in the Old West. Looks like the origin of Markham is still under construction. Well, it is kind of frustrating, but then it also is kind of interesting because, you know, you could be that person that could discover uh, where it came from, discover that, you know, that basic fact. Little Rock has lots of history, and after a dead end with Markham, today we're exploring the name behind another historic street. In 1820, a well-known attorney by the name of Chester Ashley moved to Little Rock. He was the attorney you'd want to have for any squabbles that come up. Land disputes were widespread in the early days. He was very good at what he did, and he was very, very savvy at real estate investor. What's the money comes to mind for Monopoly? Chester Ashley, for that time period, was probably the wealthiest man anywhere in the, in the territory. Ashley joined Roswell BB in getting President Van Buren to grant the patent for Little Rock. He went into practice of law with Crittenden, who they formed the Cockrell Crit the Ashley Crittenden Law Firm, which later became the Rose Law Firm, which still exists today. He says his ancestor's legacy lives on today. With all of his accomplishments, his career was not a blemish. He was accused of political manipulation and fraudulent land speculation, but historians feel this was a drop in the bucket. I think being a you know a contributor to the uh, the growth of the state in Little Rock in the early days would probably be the thing that would qualify him to have a street named after. It's notable that Chester Ashley is the only person I've ever run across that actually has two streets named for him. So far, we've covered the origin of Markham, which is still a mystery, and Chester Street, much clearer. Next, we travel to a street named after a man with a questionable record. A very colorful character in a day filled with colorful characters. Andrew Scott was a brilliant man who came to Arkansas Territory to be Superior Court Judge for the New Frontier, but there were some issues. Unfortunately, he had a temper, and it was a nasty temper. His anger turned deadly after a card game led to a duel across the Mississippi River in Tennessee. Andrew Scott killed that other judge, fairly or legally you might say, because dueling was legal in that state. It was not in Arkansas, but that didn't stop Scott from fighting with his opponent in a congressional race here in Little Rock. Andrew Scott dispatched him with a uh, sword hidden in an umbrella handle. Facing murder charges. He was tried for that crime and acquitted. 
Uh, but he left uh, Little Rock uh, and went on to uh, live the rest of his days in Pope County. Hood said early Arkansas was a dangerous and wild place. You got to keep in mind also in those same times it was written by an adventurer, Frederick Gearstacker of Little Rock, that he scarcely met a man that would refrain from wearing a pistol and a bowie knife on his belt at all times. In the past, accomplishments outweighed his bad behavior. They had a very good family name. His brother was a U.S. Marshal. Um, he had a long and very good career. A historian says power they trump morals. Who names all this stuff? They do. Uh, you know, it's the, the people who, who take those roles and end up naming things. Scott Street was named in his honor by 1820 before the street was even built. Are you feeling street smart yet? Our last street name goes to a man who changed the landscape of Little Rock and hit it out of the park. William Marmaduke Cavanaugh moved to Little Rock in 1896. He's considered to be one of the, you know, the premier leaders of the city. That uh, what a number of offices that he held. Uh, what he was county sheriff, county judge. He was the managing editor of the uh, Gazette at one time. He stepped up to the plate to bring more attention to the number one spectator sport in the country. He was the president of the Southern Baseball Association at a time when baseball was king here in Little Rock. Lighting the way to success, he was the president of the Little Rock Railway and Electric Company, a U.S. Senator and banker. He was credited with uh, 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 being instrumental in raising funds, probably setting up improvement districts and all the financial things that drove the development of Pulaski Heights, uh, Cavanaugh Boulevard area. Cavanaugh supplied the funds that helped build the first modern skyscraper in Arkansas. Today, that building still stands on the corner of 2nd and Center Streets. When Cavanaugh died in 1915, it is said that around 5,000 people came to his funeral. That kind of tells you how important you are if you have 5,000 people attending your funeral services. In 1936, Prospect Avenue was changed to Cavanaugh Boulevard in his honor. So next time you pass a street sign, keep in mind. They were named for the people that had influence at that time. It could be historic or more random. We have a whole line of streets named for presidents. We have a whole line of streets named for trees. If you look through history, it's not unusual from time to time that we go and rename our streets. And if you're thinking about renaming a street, here's one rule to remember. Uh, the board has voted lately as a matter of policy that they do not want to rename streets for a living uh, official.